So, let's see. American values. Read people that are constant. Tell people that they have constitutional rights, which increases the probability of actually getting a conviction in a court of law. No, don't do that. As Senator McCain said the other day, uh, Jacob, you got that clip? This is this is pretty Back amazing. This guy is uh, gives you a little encouragement about the improvements we've made since uh, 9/11, and so heave a sigh of relief and don't give this guy his Miranda rights until we find out what it's all about. Somebody needs to tell Senator McCain that when you read somebody their rights, you're not giving them rights. They had those rights from the very beginning. When you read them their rights, what you're doing is making it possible to put them in prison for anything they say after that point. You're increasing the probability of a conviction. So that's a, apparently a bad thing in the mind of these guys. On the other hand, selling to terrorists guns, that's a good thing. In the, in the, the FBI in 2004 started comparing gun sales and to, to the terror watch list. Even though they don't have the uh, legal authority to prevent people on the terror watch list, people who are deemed too dangerous even to get on an airplane, they don't have the authority to prevent them from buying a gun. They just started matching them up, and they found that 1,228 times in the past six years, people uh, who were on the terror watch list applied to buy a gun and 1,119 of them actually were able to. Fewer than 10%, only 109 were denied. Dan Gaynor is with us. He's the T. Boone Pickens Fellow and Vice President over at the uh, Business and Media, uh, Business and Media, what do you call it? Business and Media Institute. I'm, I'm sorry, Dan. That's okay. <laughs> Brain fart. Uh, businessandmedia.org is the website. And Dan, let me get this straight. You think that Terrorists should be allowed to buy guns? No, first of all, Tom, we're not talking about terrorists. We may be talking about it, in the, and we don't even know now in the case of Shazad, even though that appears likely. What we well, do they found know, a gun in the car that he drove out to the airport. If a no, police officer had tried to stop him on the way to the airport, he, they could have been killed. No, but he was, he was on a terrorist watch list, which right. is not a conviction. And I mean, you of all people, frankly, stunned me throwing around terms of terror, calling people terrorists before they're convicted of something. I hate to sound like the civil libertarian of the duo here, but I guess that's the role I'm going to play today. Yeah. Uh, you know, right now, according to what the, the information just came out from government, the GAO analysis of this, there are about 1,200 instances of purchases uh, in the last six years. Of those, that's 650 people who apparently were on the watch list, and 91% of them didn't have any reason to be stopped otherwise, you know, illegal immigration or felony. Other than that they were on the terrorist watch right. list. Right. But the thing is, the terrorist watch list right now, that 650 people, doesn't sound that sounds like a reasonable number. Oh, okay, well, we think those people might be terrorists. Yeah. Well, might be is not a conviction in our country, and, you know, including Shazad, uh, he's a citizen. So if you're going to start taking away rights from people, rights that are in the Constitution, Heller acknowledged that there's an individual right to gun ownership, and have government take that away, you know, just, you know, for no reason at all, other than they think somebody's guilty, is bizarre. To Dan, Dan if, we were talking, we're talking about, if we were talking about any other right, I would agree with you. But I think that Heller was wrongly decided. I don't think that the founders intended for us to have an individual right to bear arms. I think that they wanted us to have a, a militia instead of a standing army. And that was the beginning and end of the Second Amendment. And well, the Supreme Court and I both disagree with you on that point. I know. And that's the I know. And, so, Tom, let me ask you this question. Yes, though. sir. Right now we're talking about 650 people who met yeah. this requirement. How would you feel if that number was 650,000 or 6.5 million or 65 million? Dan, I'm, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm get... with you in saying that. That when the Bush administration put together this terror watch list, that they did it very badly. And that the idea that anybody, including you or I, could be put on this terror watch list exactly. is, is uh, pretty bizarre. You know, Ted Kennedy got stopped from being on an airplane because he was put on the list. And, you, and, and I you're mean, making my point, not yours, Tom. I, I, I understand that. <laughs> and, and I have some real problems with the terror watch list. I also have a real problem with the fetish. It, this has been raised to the level of a religion. The fetish in this country that doesn't seem to infect any other country unless maybe it's Somalia, that of, of people thinking that, that essentially of, of people worshiping 
guns. It's like they're worshiping a phallic no, symbol or no, something. Hey, you know, no, look at this. Not. It goes, bang! Right. I kind of have the same fetish for the First Amendment, too, which is one of the reasons why you and I can always have these conversations, because I, you know, we can disagree 100 percent. And I still literally would, you know, would fight to have you have your rights to speak. I, I because, would, too. And nobody's, that, nobody is suggesting that people on the terror thing. watch list should not have the right of free speech, although their, you, their, their mobility the is restricted. And I, I have some concerns about that as if well. If you were to wait until they're convicted of something, that's great. But to yeah. give the government the power to just declare that, especially citizens, uh, just random collection of citizens that they don't happen to like, agree with. Suppose on the terror watch list, suppose the government decided Tea Party people were on the terror watch list. Or move on.org participants, take your pick, yep. depending on the administration. Suddenly you've got millions of people on the terror watch list that can't buy guns. Well, I mean, that's, you know, that's what a dictatorship could do. That's what people look at and say, we don't want government to have this much power. I mean, again, I know that the left has an agenda against guns because if you look at the people who are backing this, not just the Brady Center, but the, the mayors that signed on to this, they yeah. also, their, their agenda is against and and the, and the police chiefs and the police officers. Yeah. And I mean, there's a general consensus in the law enforcement community broadly that the more guns there are out there, the more problems they're going to have as police officers. And but but the the, you know, the contrary, when you look at the violent crime statistics in our country, they're down at the same time that concealed carry permits in the country and states that recognize them are up. Well, so you know they they may think this because you know in their fantasy no. And and violent crime. crime is down as unemployment is I, you know I, or mashed potato consumption. I mean the, the, you're not demonstrating well, causality here, Dan, and not, you know it. No, I'm saying, historically speaking, though, when crime goes up, when when economy's bad. So, so if it hasn't gone up, maybe that has something to do with it. We don't know because the people who study these statistics, a lot of them are so agenda oriented, we're not going to find out. Let me just so ask you, if if if, if I may. So, okay, I get it that that you think that people should be able to buy guns if they're on the terror watch list. Um, should people should should the uh, should Faisal Shahzad have been read his Miranda rights? Well, he's actually a citizen, so yeah, he, he has to be. What if he was uh, a citizen? Yeah. The Constitution doesn't say these are for citizens. Well, it I, says it's for persons. Um, I, I, would say, I, I would say he's a citizen. Now, you know, he's not, I, I think the precedent has been set by FDR, so I, you know, about pe- treating, pe- treating people as he did the Nazi saboteurs, as, you know, uh, people acting for a foreign government, for a foreign power, a, you know, act of war, then they got the military tribunals treated differently. Uh, you know, but somebody who's already a citizen. Now, I, I, I personally try and for treason, and if he's guilty, executed. That's, that's different. So but, you think that uh, Richard Reed should not have been read his his rights by the Bush administration? No, I don't think he should have been. If you're if you're if you are a foreign national committing an act of terror, you're basically com- committing an act. Uh, in, Truly, even in so what? Of but but by you know you're not giving people rights when you read them their rights. You're simply telling them what, what you're doing is you're setting it up so that you can more effectively prosecute them in well, a court of law. Like, What's wrong well, with that? You're ta- you're talking about putting them in through the you know the a- average you know I commit it I go and rob a 7-Eleven. They're criminal criminals. justice system, uh, and I'm saying no, they're not. They are foreign nationals who are committing an act of terror against the United not States. Not on behalf government. of their government. Uh, Richard Reid was not committing an act of terrorism right. on the, against the United States on behalf of the British government, and he's a British You're national. Right, but once you read somebody their, their rights, what you are doing is putting them in the criminal justice system until that point in time. You know, you're not, we don't have soldiers reading people's rights in Afghanistan right now. Until then, they're foreign combatants. And right. that's, that's the way they said, that's the way FDR treated people, and, you know, who might have disputed that? Okay. I, you know, I, 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 I see the tortured logic here, Dan. I, 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 I think your logic is pretty tortured. As I, well, you know, well yeah. at a certain level, I'll, I'll own up to that. I'll, I'll tell you, I, because I don't think the guns fall into the category of all the other rights that we have. But you know, that's, a, that, that's where we disagree. Dan Gaynor, businessmedia.org. Dan, always good talking with you. Thanks. Thanks.